So, this story actually took place in Mexico many years ago. There was a missionary there who had been working with some of the kids, and kids who were a little older than you, and also up into being like teenagers, and he had been talk talking to them about Jesus, telling them how Jesus died for them, how he loved them so much, how he saved them from their sins, and some of the boys, who were like maybe 14, 15, 16 years old, started saying, you know what, this is such good news, we want to go and tell it to other people too. And the missionary was actually a little worried. He said, are you sure? You know, because here's the thing, boys, I get... I get angry people after me all the time when I'm a missionary here. People are angry because I tell, I tell them about God's love, and I tell them that He saved them and He died for them, and then I also start teaching them how to live better lives, like to not drink alcohol, and to not smoke, and to not fight. And, and then when they start doing different things in their lives, some people get mad about it. Now you might wonder, how come people would get upset if some other people stopped drinking alcohol and smoking, and smoking cigarettes? Why do you think they'd get upset about that? Well, the reason a lot of these people get upset is because they were the ones who were selling the alcohol and selling the cigarettes. And then if people quit drinking alcohol, they wouldn't buy the alcohol from the people selling it. And those shopkeepers, those, those saloon owners would get angry and they would say, how come people aren't drinking alcohol anymore? This is not good. We're not making money. And they would figure it out. Oh, it was the missionary. He taught people how to live happier lives. He taught them that Jesus doesn't want us to drink alcohol. And now they're not buying our alcohol. They would get angry. So the missionary was worried when the boy said, we want to go and start telling people about Jesus and teaching the people how to live happier lives. He said, I don't know, boys, that's kind of dangerous. Don't you think that's too dangerous for you? And the boys looked at the missionary and said, but Mr. Missionary, you taught us all these wonderful stories from the Bible. God took care of Daniel in the lion's den. God took care of David when Goliath was going to try to kill him. So why should we be worried about some people who are upset if they're... if if?" If, if we tell people to stop drinking alcohol and buying cigarettes and smoking them. That's not a problem. We're not worried. Jesus will take care of us. And the missionary thought to himself, oh, that's true. They actually have more faith than I do. I probably should start listening to my own stories. So they decided that they were going to go off. Two by two, these kids were going to go. to some. Please keep it with yourself then. No. That they were going to go off together, and they were going to start going from town to town, telling people about Jesus. And the missionary said, I'll be praying for you boys. I hope everything goes okay. Well, two of the boys who decided to go, their names were Francisco and Miguel. And they were friends. And Francisco and Miguel set off walking. They said, we're going to go to the town of San Pedro. And when they had told the missionary about San Pedro, the missionary said, oh, are you really sure you want to go there? That's one of the meanest towns around. There's lots of really rough and tough people there. They don't care for each other at all. They fight all the time. There's not good people there. Are you sure? And they said, no, we're going to go. And as they were walking to San Pedro, they had to walk for three days to get there. Have you ever walked three days in a row to get somewhere? I bet you haven't. We have cars. We have bikes. We have all sorts of ways to get around. We don't have to walk for three days to get anywhere nowadays. But these boys were so determined to tell people about Jesus, they were going to walk for three days. And along the way, they would talk to each other. And Miguel, especially, would talk to Francisco. And he'd say things like, so Francisco, are you scared about going to tell people about Jesus? And Francisco would say, nope, I'm not scared. And Miguel would say, not even a little bit? And Francisco would say, nope, not even a little bit. Jesus is going to take care of us. And when he would ask those questions, Miguel would feel a little bit better. Because Miguel was pretty nervous. But he was taking comfort. He was feeling better because his friend was having so much faith in Jesus. They finally got to San Pedro. And they went into the town. And they said, you know, I'm not really sure how we're going to start telling people about Jesus. Maybe we'll just start talking. So they went into the town. In the middle of this little town, there was an area that was open called the town square. It was a square-shaped area in the middle of the town where people would come to do their shopping. They would come to buy things and to sell things. And they said, well, there's lots of people that come to this town square. That's where we'll tell people about Jesus. So they went and they found a place to stand in the town square. And as the sun started to come up and people started to come into the town square, they started taking turns talking. First Francisco would talk for a while, then Miguel would talk. And they would start telling people things from the Bible. They would read to them verses in Spanish from the Spanish Bible. And the people started listening. And more people started kind of gathering around. And especially the people gathering around were a lot of the Indians. See, in Mexico, there are a few different races, and one of the races of people that are there are the Indian natives. And they, they, they are often treated badly by the other people who live in Mexico. They were often treated kind of like slaves. I said, come on in. Did you have a mission offering you wanted to put in today? The box is right there if you want to put it. All right. 
So the Indians, especially, were not treated nicely by the other people who lived there. And so the Indians heard suddenly, here was Francisco Miguel talking about how there was a God who loved them and who took care of them, who wanted to watch out for them. There was a God who loved them no matter who they were, even if they were poor. And the Indians especially were like, oh, this is wonderful. We want to hear more. And so they gathered all around Francisco Miguel. A lot of the Indians didn't even go back to finish working that day. They just stood there all day listening to them. Well... Some of the people who were the richer people in town, who were some of the ranchers, the farmers, and they, they had a lot of these Indians working for them as servants. They started going, where did our servants go? They went to the market today, today in the town square. They haven't come back yet. We're going to go find them. So some of the ranchers went mar- walking on down to the town square. When they got there, sure enough, there were all the Indians gathered around Francisco and Miguel. Francisco and Miguel were telling them, God loves you. Jesus loves you. He cares for you even if you're poor, even if you are not somebody who's, who's strong or rich or powerful. Jesus loves you and he died for you too. And the ranchers thought, well... Okay, that's an okay thing to tell them. I just wish they wouldn't waste their time. These Indians are supposed to come back and be working on our plantations and on our farms and and doing all the hard chores that we pay them to do. But then, Francisco Miguel started saying something else. And also, you need to be sure that you take better care of your bodies. Because if you put bad things in your bodies, your brain won't work right and you won't make good choices and you'll feel sick. And Jesus doesn't want you to live that way. And some of the Indians said, like, what kinds of things are you talking about? Francisco said, oh, like drinking alcohol. That's not good because it makes your brain make bad choices. And it makes you feel sick in your stomach. And it makes you just lie around all day with a headache afterwards going, oh, why did I drink that? And some of the ranchers heard that and they said, wait a minute, what are they telling those Indians? They're telling them not to drink alcohol? We don't like that. The reason the ranchers didn't like it is because the ranchers knew that as long as the Indians would keep drinking the alcohol then the Indians would keep wanting to work for them and make more money to buy more alcohol. And the ranchers thought, oh no, if they start drinking alcohol, they'll just go back to their own homes and work for themselves, and then we won't have all the, all the people coming to work for us. So some of the ranchers got upset. They went into some of the little bars nearby where they sold alcohol. They said to the people in the bar, hey, did you know there's somebody out there telling, telling the Indians not to buy alcohol? And the people who sold alcohol also said, what? That's not good because then we won't get any money if they stop buying alcohol. So they were all starting to get upset. And they made a little mob. You know what a mob is? A mob is a group of people who are all angry about something. Usually they're not even really sure why they're angry, but they all start getting angry. And they start saying, we're going to do something about this, and we're going to do it right now. And some of the men started saying, I know what we need to do. We need to get those two young guys out of here. They're telling people not to drink alcohol because that's bad for our community. Let's get them out of here. Now, does this sound bad for the community? Does it sound bad if they're telling them not to drink alcohol? It's actually a good thing. It'll help everybody to be healthy help everybody to be taking better care of themselves and make good choices. But these men were so angry about it, they marched out into the streets. And one of the men who was marching out into the streets, who was all angry, he had, hey, Connor, can you put your coins underneath your chair, please, or in your pocket? He's making noise to distract everybody. Thank you. One of the men who was in the mob, he had something in his hands. You know what it was? It was a shotgun. <gasps> shotgun is a dangerous weapon. It's a big gun, like about this long. And when you pull the trigger, little bullets come out of the end of it, and it can hurt, and it can kill. And he was marching along with his shotgun in his hands, and he was angry. He was one of the saloon owners, one of the bar owners, and he was saying, we're going to get them out of here for telling these Indians not to buy alcohol anymore. That's not good for us. We're going to get them out of here. And as they got there into the town square, the Indians saw these angry people coming, and they all kind of moved aside and said, "Uh uh-oh, we better get out of the way. Francisco and Miguel just stood there. And they were praying in their hearts saying, "Uh Uh-oh, dear Jesus, please help us because it looks like somebody's angry at us. And some of the mob came right up to them and one of the leaders of the mob was a man with a shotgun. His name was Ricardo. And Ricardo came up to them and said, Listen, you're going to stop telling people to buy alcohol. And Francisco Miguel said, Well, that's not actually what we're here to mainly say. We want them to know that Jesus loves them. But Jesus also said they shouldn't drink that alcohol because it's not good for them. Jesus wants them to have happier lives. And the man was so angry, Ricardo, he said, that's the part right there I don't like. Are you going to stop saying it or not? Francisco Miguel said, we have to obey Jesus. He told us to go everywhere and tell everybody the good news and help them live happier lives. And Ricardo said, if you're not going to stop, I'm going to make you stop. And he took that shotgun and he pointed it right at the tummy of Francisco. Now, normally, when you pull the trigger on a shotgun, there's a loud noise. You might want to cover your ears. I'm going to try to make how loud the noise is. It goes like this. Boom! But this time,
time when he put the shotgun right up to Francisco's belly and he pulled the trigger, all you heard was click. They didn't fire. And Ricardo thought to himself, I must have forgotten to load it or something. And he quickly grabbed the shotgun, he opened it, nope, there's a bullet in it, he closed it up, he said, I'll show you, and he put the shotgun up in the tummy of Miguel, the other boy, and he pulled the trigger. And no boom. It still didn't fire. He said, what? What's wrong with this? He opened it, he looked again, it was still loaded, he closed it up again, and then he said, I'm going to test it to make sure it's firing. He pointed it up in the sky, he pulled the trigger, and what happened? Boom! There was a loud boom. The gun worked just fine. He said, I know it's working now. He got another bullet out of his pocket. He put it in. He loaded it up. He pointed it at Francisco again. He said, now I'll stop you. Click. It wouldn't fire when it was pointing at Francisco Miguel. Does anybody have any idea why that gun wouldn't fire? Raise your hand if you think you know. Raise your hand if you think you know. Do you know? Why? Because Jesus trying to stop it with his angels. With his angels? Is that what you think as well, Elia? No, I thought that his angels, they're, 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 one of the angels were putting his hand in front of it. <laughs> putting his hand in front of the gun? Yeah. So it couldn't fire? Yep. The angels are protecting them. The angels that have protected Daniel and that have protected, that have protected Jonah and have protected uh, David were protecting Francisco Miguel. And they just stood there looking at the gun, looking at each other. They didn't know what to think. They were kind of scared, but they were kind of excited. They're like, Jesus is taking care of us. Well, you know what happened, Ricardo? He was so angry that he couldn't get them, that he couldn't kill them with his gun. He said, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tie you up. And he did tie them up. He took them to his house, kept them overnight down in his house. And the next day he said, I'm taking you down to the judge. I'm going to tell the judge that you guys were, were telling the people bad things. And he took them to the judge in a nearby town. He said, Judge, these men, they're telling people bad things. They're telling them all sorts of bad things. He, they, they even told, they told the men to burn down the, 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 the churches and, and, to, and to start fights. And Miguel and Francisco looked at each other and said, no, we didn't. And they told the judge, Judge, that's not what we said. We just wanted to talk to them about Jesus. The judge said, well, tell me some of the things that you were telling them. And so they talked to him about Jesus and how he loves them and how he died for them, how he wants to live happier lives, how he came to earth to save everybody. It doesn't matter if you're rich or poor or powerful or not. He loves all of you. And the judge said, Ricardo, you have a bad brain. Why did you think these people were causing bad problems? They were telling the people good things. You cannot stop them anymore. And if you ever try to stop them or do anything bad to them, I will throw you in prison, Ricardo. Ricardo slunk out of the courthouse. He knew he'd been defeated. He couldn't stop Francisco Miguel from saying what they wanted. In fact, now they have permission to tell anybody. They went right outside. They started preaching outside of the courthouse steps. And then they said, hey, the judge said we can go anywhere we want to tell people. We're going to go into the jail. So they went down into the jail, into the courthouse, and they started talking to all the prisoners there. Jesus loves you. He died for you. He came to save you. It was wonderful. Now they could go anywhere they wanted. And when they went back and told a missionary about this and how Jesus had protected them from the shotgun and how Jesus had used the judge to give them permission to preach anywhere, they were all so happy they just prayed and sang and thanked Jesus because Jesus had taken care of his little missionaries. And you know, if you ever choose to be a missionary, and it doesn't mean that you have to go to other towns and go marching for five to three days or have people pointing guns at you or anything. Just if you're being a missionary to your friend in school, to your neighbor, to somebody who wants to hear about Jesus, somebody who's sad and you're just telling about Jesus, Jesus is going to protect you. You don't need to be worried about anything because he's going to watch over you while you are doing his work. I hope you enjoyed that story. Now we're going to actually take a little pause and say a quick prayer for all the missionaries out in the world and then we're going to do our Bible story, okay? Everybody close your eyes. Thank you, Heavenly Father, that you protected the missionaries, Francisco and Miguel, even though they were just young guys, that you watched over them and protected them. Father, we want to pray for all the missionaries who are out there today. Now, wherever they might be, whatever situations they're in, whether somebody's angry at them, whether they're having a hard time because they don't have enough money or enough food or they're feeling sick, that you will protect them, that you will remind them that you love them, and that you will send your angels to specially guard over them. Help the offerings that we are giving as well to be one of the ways that we can encourage our missionaries to show them that we think about them and pray for them and that we want God to keep on helping them wherever they are. We love you. Amen.